Yeah, recording is on. Great. Yeah, let me start uh, with my chapter. Welcome, welcome all. Welcome to the 59th event of Vishakhapatnam Matlasian chapters. I want to express my gratitude to our esteemed community leaders who are co-hosting this event for the respective chapters, namely Jayesh and Anil Kumar from Pune chapter, Sharif from Hyderabad chapter, Samvid Joshi from Indo chapter, Rajesh Vishwanathan from Chennai chapter, Girish and Sandesh from a Bangalore chapters. So today I have the privilege of hosting a distinguished speaker, Richard Winslow, who is a director and architect at Plutora organization. Richard brings a wealth of experience and expertise in the field, and mm. I'm very much thrilled to have him share his insights with us today. So before we begin, I kind of request all participants to please keep themselves on mute to minimize any background noise as usual. And we would like to get to know our attendees. So please introduce yourself and uh, sharing your name, organization, city, and role in the chat window. And for any questions uh, you may have, so we have allocated a dedicated Q&A session at the end of the demo. So during that time, you can unmute yourself and ask your questions directly to Rick. So please note that this event is already being recorded and it will be shared to all the participants and RSVPs uh, people in a couple of days. So without further delay, I would like to hand over the virtual stage to Richard. Richard, please take a moment to introduce and speak a few lines about yourself and dive into the topic. And the yes. team, if you want to post any question and answers on the top right corner on the chat, we have general and Q&A. Please post your Q&As in the chat window or you may unmute and ask the questions to Rich at the end of the event. Rich, over to you. Great. And I'm unmute. Thank you, Supra. Um, uh, welcome from around the globe. I think a bunch of uh, you just woke up. Hopefully you got your coffee um, getting going. Um, my name is Rich Winslow. I'm the Director of Solution Architecture at Plutora. I've uh, been here for five and a half years, been in the industry for over 30, as you can tell by my hairline. Um, and uh, what I'd like to share with you today is kind of some high level uh, challenges the industry has with software delivery and then show you a tool um, that uh, uh, integrates with tools like Atlassian's Jira, for instance, um, to help you deliver uh, high quality software faster and more. Um, so that's the idea. So I'll do a little presentation and then I'll do a demonstration um, and then we'll open to the Q&A. So those are the three legs of the stool today. Um, you know, our founders worked at a very large bank in Australia and software delivery at enterprise scale is complicated. So you know, as you'll, you'll start to see, you know, there's all these different tools. We are a tool that runs across the top of the software factory, you know? So you know, how do you coordinate with other teams? And hey, my feature's not ready. And how do I align with a waterfall team if I'm a, you know, a faster DevOps team and, you know, how do we deliver more and how do I deliver faster are, are all very common needs of the business. <clears throat> and I actually love this slide. This kind of like boils down the problem statement of the market that vendors like Plutora uh, focus on. There's four problems. Okay. And this, you know, if you were a startup with a couple engineers, you keep this stuff in your head. Uh, we typically sell to the Fortune 2000, very large companies. And when you have thousands of software developers and testers and DevOps engineers and operations people, um, it gets really complicated to deliver software. Um, so what we see is first off, this piece here. Each team has a tool specific for their need. You know, you got your product managers and aha, you got the DevOps team pulling their stories I mean, the developers pulling their stories out of Jira. Then you've got the you know, CICD team who's using Jenkins. And then you've got monitoring teams, you know, tools, that, tools for monitoring. And then you've got instant management stuff from your ITSM tools. And they're disconnected. Okay. Um, the second piece is that to deliver a, a feature out here to production, you know, it's not one pipeline you change. 
And again, you're going to sense here that I'm I'm popping up a level. I'm not. This isn't a software development engineering tool. This is a a tool that runs across the top. So to deliver this one feature, I might need, and this is a little example here, five different teams to deliver. Okay. So I have multiple tools, multiple teams. Hey, I got to change the iOS app, the Android app, an API change, a database change, an open a file report. All of that has to be coordinated and they're disconnected. And then just to make it more complicated, this is the third dimension that makes this challenging is teams move at different speeds. You might have a legacy application for billing hosted on an IBM mainframe. Meanwhile, your website is release on demand, but you might need to deliver a feature out here that includes them both. Um, and so multiple teams, multiple tools, multiple cadences, and you just can't see what's going on. Um, so a little shift to you Neil know, Plator and what we do. Um, I'll, I'll try not, not go too vendor heavy on you today, um, but it's a three layer cake, okay? We are the catwalk above the software manufacturing floor. The first thing we do is we wanna integrate to your tools. And this is what I'm gonna demonstrate today, uh, the integration with Atlassian. Um, but you know, like Jira is a great tool for tracking epics and features and stories and you know, plugins to do you know, test progress and defect status. Um, but that's just one tool. You know, you've got, you know, code over in GitHub. You've, you've got Selenium and SonarCube and you're deployed in AWS and you're using Terraform and I've got ServiceNow. Um, and so we can ingest data from these sources of truth to create a common data model. And then uh, what tools like Plutora does and, and the, the category of the market is called value stream management. Kind of a fancy term. It's basically oversimplified. It's the software delivery life cycle from beginning to end. Once the product team you know, approves the feature, the devs people work on it, and then it's got to get tested, and then it's got to go through performance and get through security and get deployed and wrinkle out any incidents. Okay, um, So we're end to end. But we're not only just in creating this common data model, we run, and I'm gonna demonstrate mainly these two pieces here, uh, what we call release management, okay? And, and this will come to life in, in a moment, but the end to end, you know, what's going on across the factory. Um, and also uh, pretty uniquely, and Subro's getting familiar with this, is uh, the environment management, because all this code has to pass through test environments uh, successfully. And so this is our management and orchestration level. Um, and then the result of that, when you got the common data model and you use Plutora to run the factory, you get great analytics. Um, I think I'll skip over these two, uh, but um, the impact of having visibility into what's happening in the factory, and there's a little bit of a leap of faith here, but you know, when you, you know, how can you, you know, drive your car to another city if you didn't have a map, you, you know, and you didn't know what the, what the, how much gas you had in your car or how many seats in the car. Um, you, you need visibility uh, to manage a software factory. Uh, this is a very large health insurance and provider who doubled their feature deliveries, not by doubling their IT staff, but by using a tool, Plutora in this case, um, just to understand the factory. And even though they delivered twice as much capability, they actually reduced their incidents in production. Now you would think I'd double my incidents, right? Uh, we actually reduced them. Um, and so uh, pretty impressive. And uh, like I said, um, you know, we work on very large customers ourselves. You'll, you'll recognize these names, but you know, uh, you know, 30 years ago, these were financial telecom and healthcare companies. Now they're IT companies. Um, they are uh, very large software factories delivering a digital experience to their customers and, and uh, other business partners um, that's critical uh, for their success. <clears throat> so that was just a little light overview. So let me get into a demonstration of Plutora. Um, 
So here is Plut Plutora. Uh, we happen to be a SaaS platform, okay? We're hosted up in AWS across the globe. So you kind of just pick your region. Uh, we're also, uh, you know, SOC 2, Type 2 certified, GD GDPR certified. Um, so even though we're a SaaS solution, we're quite familiar uh, with how to meet the information security needs of your, of your, you or your clients. Um, and so I'm going to start the demonstration off and kind of tease you with some outcomes. <laughs> and then I'll get into a little bit of the why. Um, and I'm going to start with release management. So here's some visibility we're able to achieve. You know, uh, management teams want to deliver more, faster, better. So Plutora will track how many releases you're doing by type, by portfolio. You know, if you're a bank, you know, how many releases for the credit cards versus home loans versus, you know, business uh, um, loans versus investment planning or something. Um, tracking risk levels, um, how much time you're spending in each phase, understanding what types of, you know, epics, features, stories you're delivering over time. Um, you know, which portfolios are delivering those what types, what themes are they supporting? And also, you know, which, what incidents are occurring in production? So hopefully you can start to sense here, we're understanding the very front end, how it moves all the way through and going to the very back end um, about how it's performing. So some more outcomes. Uh, these are the classic four DORA metrics. That's the dev, that's the uh, DevOps Research Assessment Team, kind of founded by Gene Kim and a few others, you know, tracking your deployment frequency, okay? Um, you know, the industry wants, you know, the recommendation is that you want to do more deployments, do more smaller deployments more frequently because, you know, your, your impact size is smaller. You know, if, you, if you're releasing once a year, the amount, if and you have a defect, you have to look at a year of code. If you're releasing once a week, you only have one week of code to look at for where the delta is, okay? Um, understanding how fast you can respond to the business. You know, what's your lead time for changes? You know, from, hey, when the moment, and there's different ways to measure this, but I like to think of it when the, when the idea is approved, how long does it take it to get to the, um, the customer? And when you do deliver that feature to the customer, what's your change failure rate? And what's your mean time to restore service? Uh, these are pretty amazing to me too, because uh, what's really interesting, if you can cut down your mean time to restore service to a minute or two, you can actually take more risk. Maybe I don't care about the change failure rate because I can respond so quickly. Um, but you're trying to watch these different metrics uh, to be able to deliver uh, more, faster, better. And you know, this is kind of a pie in the chair, a pie in the sky uh, dashboard that we're able to deliver. But the ultimate goal is investment in IT should have a business outcome. This is pretty, you know, this is this is a report for the CEO, you know, back to the business, to the business owners who's funding IT. You know, certainly Plutora can count user stories delivered, but you know, is the revenue increasing? Uh, how about the support incidents to the customer service line? Are they increasing or decreasing? Uh, what's the NPS score? That's net promoter score. What's your CSAT score? Um, all of these things can be measured and back correlated. Uh, and so you're driving business outcomes, not just, you know, cranking out new user stories. <clears throat> so that was kind of a teaser on some of the metrics. Um, what I'm going to show you next uh, is how we do end-to-end -end release management and the integration uh, to Jira Atlassian, which is kind of the purpose here. Um, this is our insights dashboard. And what each one of these rows is, the fancy name is a value stream. Um, but you, know, you could call it your SDLC, a project, a product, a CICD pipeline. Um, we really don't care. Um, but the idea is we want to create a 360 degree view of everything that's happening in the software factory across teams, across tools, even if they're using different cadences. 
Um, so as an example, I've got an agile team here. Hey, they're delivering a portal release and they, they deliver on a monthly cadence and they have a dev phase, a SIT, you know, system integration test phase, a user acceptance test phase, and then they go through a staging phase before they go to production. Yeah, that's great. Now, I, I find that all of our customers have different teams who have different cadences. Here's a more advanced DevOps team who's got a website and they are just doing quick, three quick sprints. They do some extra hardening and then they go to production. So what we call these are templates. These are your best practice for delivering software. It is not meant to be heavyweights. Okay. It's not meant to be lightweight. It means it's meant to be the best practice for you delivering software. And we want to help you follow it. Again, if it was two software developers, you keep this in your head. Whatever you have 5,000 software developers, you know, all this stuff going on simultaneously and all the testers and all the, the you know, people managing the DevOps tools and operations, it gets really complicated on what's going on and you need to um, have this visibility. So we create these templates. And what these templates are, if I drill into here, is we capture your software delivery lifecycle and help you follow it. So during the dev phase, here are all the things I have to do. And they can be as exciting as hold a kickoff meeting, you know, make sure the product team approves, you know, the project, uh, make sure information security has been involved early, make sure you've asked for your test environments. These tend to be more at the management level um, because we'll track stories from JIRA, which you'll see in a minute, um, in real time and test progress and defects and builds. We'll track that in real time, but these tend to be more the, you know, the SDLC stuff, the higher level. And these are all assigned to a person or team with a relative due date. These are updated in Plutora or uh, can be updated through a notification to like a Slack channel or a Teams channel or email, uh, or they can be updated through API. <clears throat> so we want to create these templates for the different styles of software delivery. Again, meant to be not heavyweight or lightweight, but, but, but appropriate. Um, and so here comes the integration to JIRA. So what we do is once we create these templates, we have an integration la layer. And what I'm looking at here, you guys probably know this better than I, uh, but obviously this is my, my Jira instance and I've got a software project called Payments and I have all these different fixed versions. So I have a 2304 minor release. Okay, just again, it's my demo instance. Hey, I got to update the website for April and all my user stories would be in here. Um, in general, the dev team stays in Jira. Um, but what's needed is all the other downstream teams need to integrate to Jira to understand what the heck's going on over there, uh, among other things, which you'll see in a minute. <clears throat> so as you can probably predict, what um, my integration layer does is detect this new fix version and detect these stories and bring them into Plutora. Uh, we're gonna key off some things and we're pretty flexible here. I'm gonna key off this little term minor. Okay. If I come back to my demonstration instance, I took a look at my release templates I've got a minor release template. So what I'm gonna do is my integration level, typically it either runs on a, uh, a webhook or maybe on a, a schedule like every five minutes and just ask Jira, hey, what's changed? Hey, oh, I've got a new fixed version of minor. I'm gonna grab this template, duplicate it, phase shift it and bring it over. So if I come back to my releases here, and I think I was looking at 2304 minor. So if I do a filter here okay, on uh, 2304, the demo gods are being good to me. There it is, 2304 minor release. I've pulled it over. I've leveraged things, hey, what type of release? What's its status, risk level, which team is making it? What day is it supposed to go to production? I also pick up what applications are changing. Now this is, uh, you guys are steeped in Jira. Our recommendation, and it's kind of the industry's going here, is the software developer for their user story should use the component field 
to communicate to the rest of the team what, if you can see this, what application is changing. So he's checked off that I did a der, 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 payment website. That's the component I'm changing. Okay. So if you come over back to Plutora, we pick that up, changing the payment website. And survey says, update the website for April, which if I go back here, update the website for April. So our integration to JIRA is basically real time. It's not a one-time integration, but it's a synchronization. So if you add three more stories, you know, if you change the implementation date, we'll track all of that. Uh, because the folks who are kind of worried about that end-to-end -end process, you know, rather than you know, logging into JIRA and exporting it, then logging into a defect tool and exporting and logging into a, a test progress tool. And then you know, it's all manual. There's no... There's no automated tools to understand the entire factory across teams, tools, and cadences. Uh, so that's what we're trying to achieve here. Um, so uh, Jira is our number one integration, by the way. Uh, probably 85% of our customers are integrating to Jira to pick up. And, and again, we're a bit flexible on this, but generally these are fixed versions. And generally these are Epic's features and stories that we're pulling across. Um, I would say that I'm seeing it pretty common now that folks are deploying plugins to Jira, like what X-Ray and Q-Test to track uh, test progress and defect status as well. Um, those are different API endpoints, but we can bring that data in as well, which you'll kind of see in a minute. So that was a big drum roll for uh, how we integrate to Atlassian. Like I said, uh, our most common, and I would say most valuable integrations, so it's the first integration uh, that we typically do to start building that that view. Um, it, you know, uh, us folks in DevOps, you know, we use a lot of different tools. Um, I know Atlassian, I think it's called Service Manager. Um, my demo instance here is actually integrated to ServiceNow. So as a release, and again, we're a bit flexible here, but I can automatically open a change ticket in ServiceNow based upon what I detected out of Jira create in Plutora, and then open the change ticket in draft form for the operations team to get early visibility into what's happening. You know, dev ops, right? Dev teams trying to develop all these new features. The ops team doesn't want any features because they don't want to break production. Uh, you know, so you're kind of at odds um, all the time. So visibility, transparency, early communication uh, is, is a valuable thing. So I'm going to go back to my insights dashboard just to kind of show you the end to end scope here. So again, I'm taking a look at a, a, a release here or pipeline. It's the portal release. I'm understanding because people have checked off in Jira what components are changing. Um, I understand my user stories, which I already showed you. I'm watching my governance and compliance. You know, you don't want to be about to deliver to production tonight, Friday night, and find out, oh, shoot, I forgot the security scan or the performance test, or we didn't upside, update the, the knowledge base you know, to educate the customers about what's coming out. You know, this is, you know, we're tracking all the governance and compliance. Uh, we also will bubble up, because we know all the governance and compliance, what are those things that are overdue? Okay, so, you know, these are the people that need help. Um, you know, if this is your best practice for delivering software and they are overdue, this is where they need help. Um, our customers, again, to just get a little pitch here, <laughs> um, their release managers transition from being gatekeepers to mentors. If a pipeline is clean and smooth and things are getting done, the stories are done, the testing's clean, the defects are clean, governance and compliance, just let them run. But these people are stuck. They need help. Um, and so it's really interesting how, um, you know, Plutora customers or release managers turn into coaches. Um, but you notice over here on the right, I'm also ingesting test progress. Okay. So depending upon where this comes from, uh, the, what, what is the test progress for this pipeline? Um, you know, this can be the unit testing in a CICD pipeline. It can be the integration testing, performance testing, security testing, and also ingest the defect status. So hopefully you kind of get a sense here. Again, this is a management view across teams, across tools, across cadences about what the health of the release is for two purposes. One is 
um, to deliver a high quality release. Uh, and But the second is to do more faster uh, or second and third. So once you use Plutor to do this, you're gonna get some other outcomes, which I'll tease, uh, show you real quick. Uh, you're gonna get, get a release schedule. We know all the releases. I know all the phases. Okay, so uh, this is a very uh, valuable tool. Um, like, so right here, we're right here. Hey, I've got an emergency release for the claims team. What else is happening on the schedule that might be interacting with this new release that just popped up, okay? So we're giving visibility to that. I can also view it as a more tactical view, pragmatic view on a calendar. So today's the 19th, I don't have any deployments. I've got that emergency claims release this, this Sunday. I've got to worry about uh, in the US, it's Memorial Day on Monday the 29th. Um, I had an offshore holiday, uh, the first and second of the month. Um, I do a, a DR test in operations the first Wednesday of every month. So you can sense here, this is a shared dev ops calendar about everything that's happening in the factory. Lots of filters to see and not see things. Um, very popular feature because you need to slot. Uh, the big thing is slotting uh, production releases. That's probably the, the most common use case for this you know, across, uh, you know, in balancing everything that's going on. And we can also, because we've ingested all this data, we have uh, what we term a system impact matrix. What this is, is a forward looking view of all the changes. So across the top here are all the applications under management. Here are all the, you know, the projects or pipelines. And in the middle are is the, uh, the scope, the user stories, the defects. Okay, so that's what the little legend is showing. Where am I making code changes and regress and have dependencies? So if you drill in a little here, say, hey, this portal project is making one change to client services, they're doing a defect fix. Simultaneously, another team is making two changes to the same code. They're doing a feature and a change request. So, you know, this is typically in the head of a couple architects. We're trying to give visibility to the entire team about all the stuff in flight so you can manage these interdependencies. You know, ideally, you don't have interdependencies, but that's not the real world. The real world is, you know, a mixed bag. And I, I need to understand, like, if one of these teams slipped, it might drag down the other team. And you know, I need to make some decisions there. Um, and also quality engineering teams. They'll look for hot spots of activity. Hey, I've got 12 changes being made to the authorization service. Perhaps I should do the full automated regression suite rather than just the sanity test um, as an example. Um, you know, so ultimately what happens if I go back to the insights dashboard, you know, we, the release gets approved, you know, the user stories get worked on, it starts getting cranked out. It's got to pass through test environments. Um, this is what Suvra and team at National Grid are using is our test environment management capability. Um, so by integrating to JIRA, I know all the releases that are coming through the test environment. Um, and I'm, I'm going to kind of hit this at the high level just so you kind of get a little scope of uh, the problem statement and potential solution here. Um, so again, tease you with some outcomes here. Plutora can manage the test environments. It's critical to test on appropriate environments. If you test on an environment with the wrong code, you know, worst case, you know, best case, you wasted time. All those testers and all those engineers who wanted to see the results from their tests, you know, a day, two, a week, you know, wasted time. Uh, worst case, you introduce a defect to production. Okay. Um, and so what Plutora helps with is understanding, in this case, I got a path to production. This is all configurable, renamed and such, but I'm going here from SIT to UAT to stage to prod. These are my integrated test environments. These are all the components or applications and their version. So I've got an address verification service that is at version 1.1, soup to nuts, if you can see that. My Authorization service, however, you can see some microservice that's at version 76 in SIT, 
but it's version 74 of them, prod. That's environment drift. Now that could be good drift. You know, maybe there's a couple defect fixes. Maybe there's a couple of user stories coming down the pipe um, or it could be unintentional. Uh, you know, perhaps, you know, somebody up, updated something, but you know, didn't, didn't update production. Um, and I'm kind of jumping a little ahead, but every time your CI CD pipeline runs, our best practice is tell Plutora and I can then show you exactly the delta between 74 and 76 without having to, you know, log into, you know, Git or, you know, some repo. Um, I can tell you the, the defects and user stories that are delivered there. Um, so again, this, this data tends to be spread out across all these tools and people don't see it. And then you start making boo-boos <laughs> um, and testing on the wrong environment and wasting time or introducing defects. <clears throat> Um, so understanding your inventory of integrated environments, the components in there and their versions, and also how they are interconnected. Okay. So <clears throat> typically we leverage this from a CMDB about what are their upstream and downstream dependencies and give a visual view of how the different uh, components are interconnected. Um, and, you know, this is, again, typically in the heads of a couple architects. We want to show this to everybody. Because every, you know, this is going to help everyone test better and faster. Um, what what we're trying to build up to as well. So um, the environment management. There's kind of two main personas. There's typically a test environment management team who is responsible for the inventory, how it's interconnected, its versions, you know, keeping it up and running and monitored. Um, but then there's a second persona of the teams who need them. Say, so, hey, I need a test environment on July 1st for a week uh, to test my, my new uh, features going to production at the end of the month. <clears throat> um, and so what we layer on top of this, um, and this is the outcome, and I'll show you a little bit of the how, but we want to handle booking requests. Like, hey, I need a test environment. So this is a Gantt chart view of all the environments across time and the different teams or pipelines that are using them. So, hey, the mobile banking team has their three sprints and they, they need a test environment to, to do integrated testing um, for that. Then they upgrade to staging and then they go to UAT and then they go to prod as an example. Um, so heaven forbid a real time schedule that you know this is representing the complete inventory as well as all the teams using it. And we even, if I got an example here, we pick up the test environment change requests. Okay, I tested last night and it worked fine. I test today and it didn't work. I didn't do anything. What happened? Oh, oh, somebody from the infrastructure team, you know, did a security patch update. So we can also correlate what changes are happening to the environment. So we, we tend to be the, uh, a lightweight, uh, uh, change management tool for the test environments. Typically, there's a very heavyweight tool like a ServiceNow or Remedy or maybe Service Desk for production. Uh, sometimes I can see that it, I see the non prod environments be just chaotic and just out of control, it's emails and spreadsheets and SharePoint sites. Um, we want to uplift that uh, to give an appropriate level of management. Uh, so you understand uh, and track your changes in your environments and who's using them. So just a little bit about how we pulled that off. Um, we certainly want to pick up all your, your applications that you use. If I do a little filter here, I kind of highlighted this. Each application is going to have a repo. Um, we want to pick up every build. So for instance, uh, my payment website, every time uh, this gets executed, I pick up the build uh, for the build 1.118. I can see, you know, through this common data model, you know, that it was built, you know, on uh, September 7th, that it got deployed to dev immediately on September 7th. And then uh, just, you know, four minutes later was deployed to system integration test. Um, and for each one of these builds, uh, pretty impressive. I can pick up the Jenkins log. So if it failed, I'll, I'll, I'll do this good one though. Um, 
but this is the actual Jenkins log. So without having to go into Jenkins and dig into the projects and find the builds, you know, I brought that all together in a single spot. Um, so I can start my troubleshooting at least here, probably end up um, in another tool. And I can see, view the change log here. This is very powerful because I'm picking up from Jira, the, uh, the user story uh, that, was, that was part of this commit. So I'm creating a backlink from you know, the likes of a Git or GitHub or Bitbucket to Jira to cross-link that to the build and cross-link that uh, to ultimately the release that this is on. Um, so we have this full data model you know, of, of what the heck's going on. <laughs> so ho hopefully that's coming through. <clears throat> so we, you know, we track all the apps, we track all the builds, the commits, um, pick up the logs. Um, and, and then we want to track because, you know, there's dev and there's sit and there's UAT and staging and prod. Every application is deployed in multiple places um, for, for good reason, but they could be different. So as an example, hey, I've got this address verification service in SIT. It's in four different places. And I want to track the key technical specifications uh, for this application, uh, this application deployment. Things like, you know, the, the app version or build, OS versions, patch versions, test data version, anything that you need for a quality outcome, okay? Um, we we want to track <clears throat> so you know you're, you're working on the right um, configuration. And then this, uh, we, we do then, we do model the integrated environments. Like here, I got the claims SIT integrated environment, which consists of multiple sub environments, okay, that are all interconnected in some some sort of way, and that and that's how I did that environment map. You know, hey, address verification is talking unidirectionally to the uh, MQ IBM SIT thingy jiggy using an API, and that's how I showed that environment map. <clears throat> um, and so, understand your inventory's configuration, uh, then. Uh, accept booking request. Now, I might have skipped over the booking request. Well, um, the ultimate is when I model your releases and I know kind of the phases, I am predicting, you know, because I integrated to JIRA and know what fixed versions are coming down the line, I've predicted when I need SIT. I need from the 13th through the 19th. Then I need UAT from the 20th through the 26th. Then I need staging for the, on the 27th, and then I'm going to prod that night. Okay, so that's predicting the environment demand. <clears throat> um, and so that's how we create that environment schedule. Um, and I also want to track all your changes. So, hey, I've got, uh, I need to deploy the address verification service on SIT. Okay, so we can be the change control tool for test environments. So you, know, you open this up, kind of looks like a booking request. It's gonna go through a workflow, okay? Just kind of touch on that briefly, all configurable. You know, hey, a you know, database change might go this way, a security patch goes this way, an app deploy goes that way. Um, and I'm saying, hey, deploy the address verification service. Uh, in this case, I've actually integrated to Jenkins. Um, I've integrated to a job, the... Uh, uh, <laughs> Delivering that to one of my customers, apparently. <laughs> um, but uh, I can integrate to Jenkins and then run that job. Um, and then if it's successful, um, I'll update those specifications on the, the uh, environment configuration. Couple more things to show without overwhelming you. From a test environment management point of view, we can also integrate to monitoring tools. So uh, what I like about this view, and it's a pretty advanced concept, I think about a third of our customers have adopted this and more and more are liking it, is you need to understand your inventory of environments, the teams that are using them, and if they're up or down. One of my banking clients has app dynamics spitting out hundreds of errors a day, and they have no idea. It's like, oh, what server was that? What environment is it connected to? Is anybody using it? And who do I call to tell that I've got it? So we solve that. So for instance, I've got the authorization service down in SIT. 
and there's somebody using it right now. I have a test environment booking request from the 9th to the 15th and the environment is down. I can send an alert directly to the environment management team and the project team that's using this. Whereas, and hopefully my data is good here. Okay, that's a bad example. I've got to find one. My payment website. Okay, my payment website on staging is down. Nobody's using it. So I hope you get a sense that Plutora is correlating data across teams, across tools to create actionable things to speed you up uh, and do things better. The thing to close on, I'm doing pretty good. I have 14 minutes. I'll just do another minute or two. Um, is uh, we do have an integration layer. So we've got a nice API. Uh, like I was just talking about the environments, uh, their technical specifications, we call those hosts and layers. You know, when it comes to integrating with Jira, uh, you know, hey, we call those changes in Plutora, that those are user stories. You know, integrating to Jira with fixed versions, uh, the, we call those releases. Okay, so I can, you know, uh, talk, uh, we have this integration layer that talks API to API to create this common data model. <clears throat> and all of this data, and this is where I'll stop, all of this data is flowing into our data lake. I have 87 different analytic cubes up in the cloud about my software factory. I've got, you know, actually just to stick kind of with the Jira angle, I've got every user story right here. I've got every release, okay, uh, right, right here. Um, I've got the defects, I got the test progress, I've got the incidents from ServiceNow, I've got all the builds. Um, and, and these data cubes are woven together so I can report across the tools. Um, you might recognize this, this is Tableau that is integrated into Plutora. Um, as part of the offer, we come with about 150 out of the box reports, but you can just go to town. You know, I've got my favorites over here. I've shown you some already. Uh, here's a, here's another fun one, build metrics. You know, you don't have to go to Jenkins to get this. It's right here, you know, build frequency duration and such. Um, I showed you the, I showed you the Dora metrics. I think we call them DevOps. Oh, let me hit favorites. It's the last one I'll show, then open it up. So the DevOps metrics, and you know, also like just even what's impressive about this, this report, this takes three different tools to get this report. Um, and, you know, Plutora provides this, this out of the box. Um, so uh, that's Plutora. Uh, maybe I'll kind of cut back to the insights dashboard, you know, how it kind of in this respect kind of starts with Jira with fixed versions and chain you know, user stories, uh, but continues all the way to production gives you this oversight um, as well as helps you manage through the very complex problem of managing uh, through test environments. Um, so yeah, I'd like to uh, super maybe uh, open it up for questions. Um, maybe one little last thing, if, if any of this is of interest, um, you know, you're happy to drop me a LinkedIn request. Um, we also have technical training uh, for the release management and environment management. I'm happy to sign you up for this um, if, if, uh, if, if this resonated. So there you yeah. go. Thank you. Thank you so much, Richard, for this valuable and insightful uh, session. And uh, I must thank uh, the, my co-leaders who are parallelly hosting this, co-hosting this event live for Pune, Hyderabad, Bangalore, Chennai, and indoor chapters. Thank you so much, team, for coming forward and uh, helping me <laughs> host this event and uh, you co-hosting this. And yep. uh, yeah, uh, they cannot unmute uh, so because they're hosting on their chapters. So, but they can uh, post any questions on the Q&A. So uh, leaders, if you have any queries, please do post on the Q&A session. Or if not, uh, you can send it to me. I can share with Rick. So Rick, like, uh, would you show us the UI, how do we integrate uh, Plutora with uh, Atlassian products like Jira or Bitbucket or Confluence? Not the step by step, but on the UI, where are the steps or where are the yeah. settings that we need to? Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. So the way, um, the way I've done it uh, on Plutora is this is um, our integration hub. Okay. 
And so we basically have these connectors um, that integrate to these. Uh, so I've got a connector for Jira. This is uh, Jira releases and stories. So we load this up in the cloud and this is gonna talk API to Jira and talk API to Plutora. And I've got uh, a little uh, script here that does that. And we've parameterized, parameterized it with the key parameters. You know, things like, you know, you know, what do you want to bring across? What projects do you want to bring it across? What region you're in, that sort of thing. Um, and so we basically, uh, you know, pull this, pull this uh, connector, you know, off the shelf. We might need to tweak it a little bit. You know, there might be some custom logic, maybe some, you know, funky things that, uh, you, know, you know, often we see some of these, you uh, implementations have been out there for quite a while. Maybe it was an acquisition, a little bit different. So we can you know, tweak our connector, um, but, but that, that's how it does. We have a professional services team mm -hmm. uh, responsible for taking our connectors, adapting it for our customer and then deploying it. So here, here this is an example of uh, uh, the connector that we're using to talk to Jira. Good stuff. Anything else? Uh, give me a minute. I'm, I'm getting two more questions. I'm just uh, submitting okay. them. Okay. So one of the uh, leaders is asking this question. And nowadays, both Microsoft and Google are completely into the AI and machine learning. And they are uh, changing the industry to a different height in terms of enterprise scaling or in terms of agile project methodologies, or even including a safety methodologies. Mm -hmm. Given that in this picture, he's, he's asking, how does this tool is going to address or uh, cope up with AI or get integration yeah. with the AI platforms or ML platforms in brief? That's a question in brief. Yeah, I think what our approach to kind of AI machine learning and data is we are creating these data lakes. Like I said, we have 87 different data lakes. So we're ingesting data from all these different tools. Um, and it's not just random data. We're, our, our goal is to connect them. Okay. Cause you know, like a, a release should have, you know, stories which should have test cases, which should have executions, which should have defects, which should have builds, which should have, you know, so we're, we're weaving them together um, and putting them all up in our data lake and, ta and, and, and use Tableau as our visualization layer. Um, we are leveraging some of Tableau's latest you know, feature functionality like ask data and explain data to try to do some, you know, predictive information. Um, but, you know, by, by understanding across teams and tools uh, where you're at, you get, you get more uh, throughput and higher quality. Um, and then with some of these new features like ask data and explain data, you know, trying to get more predictive of it, I, I think it's a bit emerging. Um, but, you know, I, I think we are well positioned because we are creating a data lake across uh, tools, teams, and cadences uh, that then we can you know, run our analytics across them all. Uh, so, so pretty, pretty impressive. Okay. You know, typically these different teams and you know they 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 can be very isolated. It's like, wait, you know, how many user stories did I did? That's all I know. It's like, well, did you did you generate any defects because of that, or incidents in production, or has it been deployed to you know the performance environment? Um, so does this tool has the KB options instead of writing the lines and pages of codes or the information, can we directly download the uh, environment detail as part of the metrics or as part of the schedule uh, calendar that we have shown? I mean, the question is like, how does the Plutora tool helps in the preparing the documentations or knowledge base or develop the content from environments. Mm -hmm. It can be better yeah, from the perspective. 
Yeah, let, let me ask that in two, answer that in two ways. Mm-hmm. But first off, I would hope you use Plutora for that, <laughs> you know, because we have all the data. Um, so, you know, when, when it comes to proof, hey, I need to release to production. I'm a you know, Fortune 1000 company. I need to prove to management that I did what I said I'm going to do. I've got all the data. Okay. So I call this a technical release note for this release. You know, I tested on these environments. I'm changing these applications. Here's all my governance compliance. Here's my stories I'm delivering, my deployment plan steps, my test cases executed, my defects that are fixed. I've got it all. We simplify what is typically a change advisory board significantly, probably by upwards of 70% um, because we have all the data. Um, But you can also then, all of these you can register for. Let me just change this on me. Okay, here it is. I can subscribe to all of these. So, you know, if you're an executive every Monday morning, you just want an update on what's the status of the releases or how many stories are delivered or who's buying, you know, whatever. Um, So I can subscribe to all of these. Um, But if you want, you know, I, I'm not a huge fan of it, but you certainly can download all of this as well. So I can download this um, data, um, uh, you know, either, you know, to a PDF, but I can also just you know, grab the, the, the raw data. Um, it's also available all via API. We have some customers who are extracting data out of our data lake via API. Um, so a few different ways, but something as trivial as, hey, I need a status report to prove that my release is ready to go to production is out of the box report, it just happens. Perfect. Got, got it. Uh... You know, it certainly is a journey. I think, you know, you, you kind of eat this one bit at a time, just like software development. It's an agile journey. You start with the most important high priority items and then you just, you just keep improving. You're kind of, you're kind of never done with Plutora. Um, you're always, you know, all right, what's the next problem I need to go solve? Let's go solve it. All right. Hey, now I need to iterate to, you know, to what? You know, all right. I already integrated to Jira for all my fixed versions and stories. Now let me go integrate to X-Ray. Okay. Now I need to integrate to, to GitLab. Now I need to integrate to ServiceNow. But um, the ultimate outcome is that, that big, huge data lake and great visibility. I got to pretty interesting question, sir, Richard. So we have a Pega systems, Pega platform, which itself is an ecosystem. So that has got integration with the majority of the softwares. Does Plutoro also integrate with a Pega platform? Uh, and sir, what's the name of the platform? A Pega, P-E-G-A, Pega platform. It is an ecosystem Yeah, I, by I just... itself, similar to Atlassian and the Apple ecosystem. I, I just, I have, I, I must admit, I've never heard of Pega. Okay, okay. Um, you know, the, in the grand scheme of things, it might sound overly bold, but mm-hmm. if it's got an API, I can talk to it. I, yeah, I it's, would got, it's got a lot of APIs. <laughs> yeah, so yeah. That's it's, one of the interesting questions that I, have. I got. But it's, I guess, what's, uh, uh, don't want to be rude, but what's the purpose? What, what problem are we trying to solve by integrating to Pega? You know, focus on that, and then we'll figure out, we'll figure out how to do that. Yeah, customer relationship management, business process management. Um, but yeah, so it just, just kind of depends what use case. And that, that's kind of where we start. We start with, we don't care about the tools. Uh, you know, certainly Jira is, you know, numero uno when it comes to, uh, you know, tracking stories. Uh, from development point of view, um, but we don't really, we don't care. As long as it's got an API, we can talk to it. Got it. I have one last query that I got. So who are the Plutora competitors with this kind of functionality? Seems like, like Microsoft, Google? No, like not Apple. at all. <laughs> not so at all. Plutora, who is a Plutora competitor? Um, our, our competitor is ready for this one. Microsoft Fantastic. with Microsoft Excel. Our number one competitor is do nothing. Just have these poor people try to assemble all this data, 
in Excel spreadsheets and copy and paste into PowerPoint, and use wiki pages and email and project meetings. That's our number one competitor. Now, um, uh, I would say that there, there are folks who are getting close. ServiceNow, yeah, they're kind of interested in this area. Um, I, I think Atlassian, interestingly enough, hasn't pursued this, but you know, it kind of depends on their strategic vision. Uh, Digital AI had made a bunch of acquisitions to try to do this. Um, but you'll you'll find as you dig deep into this that you know, there are definitely different perspectives. So depending upon what you're trying to solve, um, you know, ServiceNow tends to be an ITSM tool. You know, Atlassian kind of is very strong on the, you know, the front end, you know, releases and stories, you know, epic features and stories side. Yeah. Um, we, 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 we are more, we pop up a level and run across the top and try to, you know, provide that across teams, across tools, across cadences, visibility. So, you know, what the heck is going on. <clears throat> Thank you, Richard. And those are the questions that I received. And uh, let's look at the participants. Uh, thank you, Arza, for joining uh, on this early morning and on the weekend. Yeah, you may unmute and uh, you may ask any queries or questions to Richard. But if you're unable to unmute, you may post on the chat window, even Balakrishna. Yeah, I think we're pretty down to just a couple other folks, but I'm glad you got the recording. You can share out with the rest of the team. Yes, I'm going to share. And uh, yeah, Richard, like you said, uh, you have a few training links, right? Or would you like to share to other participants so that you know when I share the recording, I will be posting that uh, URL or coming. If you yeah, want. probably just my LinkedIn profile is probably the most appropriate, and then I can I I just, I'd need to Perfect. enroll Perfect. them and, and get them the training link if they're if they're interested. Sounds good. So I have your uh, LinkedIn uh, handle handy with me. So I sent a request. I'll share that with the participants. Great. And give me a minute. All okay. right. Thanks, Paula Subra. All right. And I think, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll stop the recording now.